here with Eric Good, who's the producer and director of the smash hit Tiger King. And Eric's done all kinds of other things in his life, too. He's an empresario, entrepreneur, artist. But right now, it's all about Tiger King, Eric. And um, man, did you ever expect it was going to take the country by storm the way it has? I mean, <laughs> no, but of course, I, I mean, I did think it would be successful. You know, I, I think we were very fortunate to stumble upon such an unbelievable story, but of course not. Um, you know, we have this crazy moment in time that's, you know, stranger than fiction, frankly, as is the series. Yeah, so, I mean, what is it, first of all, I guess the question is, do you think it would have done as well if it wasn't for the coronavirus? I mean, how are these things, like, connected? Well, of course, I don't think it would have done as well. We're at a moment in time where we have this captive audience. You know, we're not, there are no sports programs on. People are dying to have a reprieve from this, you know, the surreal moment that we're in. So, obviously, we have a captive audience watching captive cats. Um, you know, so it, we've never been in a situation like this. Yeah, I mean, I never really thought about that captive audience and captive cats thing. That's that's truly, truly amazing. But but still, I mean, I think it would have done well regardless. And, and what is it you think that resonates with so many people about this about this show? You know, I mean, you know, when I set out, when we set out to make this series, Rebecca and I, um, we were fascinated with this sort of best in show, grizzly man aspect of people that keep exotic animals, more of the pathology behind, you know, why, uh, you know, people are so attracted to keeping tigers or, and, and, and chimps and primates and reptiles. And, and we looked at the whole, we cast a, a, we casted a wide net initially and then honed in on the big cat world uh, due to certain circumstances. So I, I would say first and foremost, the characters. And then, of course, we stumbled upon this incredible story, unbeknownst to us, that Joe allegedly wanted to kill Carol Baskin and tried to kill Carol. Um, and so, you know, and, and it was bizarre because it was contemporaneous with the film, I get the story. Yeah, I mean, the characters are really amazing. I mean, it, you know, is Joe exotic for real? I mean, that's really him? I think you can see parallels between Joe and our current president. They both ran for president. Imagine if Joe had become president. No, you can't, you know, it, it, you can't make these people up. Um, you know, I, I mean, how can you, you know, I, I think if we had pitched this as a scripted series or scripted feature, it, you know, people would have thrown this back in our face because it just is unbelievable. You know, how can you have characters like this? You know, I think someone would have said, this is not possible. But truly, reality is stranger than fiction. Are, are all these people, the characters, good and evil, or any of them purely good or purely evil? Have you considered that? I mean, look, I don't think anybody is purely evil. Um, I think that it, there's always shades of gray. In Joe's case, you know, there was, you know, and I still have a lot of empathy for Joe, and there were so many wonderful aspects to Joe. You know, you got to love a openly gay, mullet-wearing, you know, flamboyant, country-singing uh, man in red state Oklahoma. Um, but on the flip side, Joe, you know, along with a lot of these other characters, created their own little universe, their own little worlds. And ultimately, they played by their own rules. And, and as much as I love people that are obsessed with things and live outside of mainstream society, in, in this case, it was almost cultish, if not cultish. And Joe ultimately played by his own rules and, and really was his own worst enemy in the end. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but. Yeah, yeah. So, so Joe's in jail, in prison, he's got like a 20 year sentence or something like that. And I, I, I read that you thought that was maybe a, a little too long. You know, look, he's got a 22-year sentence. He's 57 years old, so effectively he'd be 80 when he gets out. He doesn't have good help. Joe did horrible things to both animals and, I think, to people. And should Joe be punished? I think absolutely Joe should be punished. Although I think our criminal justice system is sometimes only about punitive 
uh, being punitive and not being reformative. And so I, I would wish that Joe wouldn't spend the rest of his life in prison, but it's not really for me to decide, sadly. And, and what does Netflix have to say to you, Eric? I mean, they must be pretty damn happy, right? I, I think they're happy. <laughs> So, are you, have they asked you to do another one, or I mean, you know, what's next for Eric Good? I don't know. I, I, I will say this: my, you know, my current business, hotels and, and restaurants, is not the business to be in, obviously, at the moment. So, maybe this will send me in a new direction, making documentaries. I think a lot of Americans hope so. Um, and finally, um, have you, um, like the rest of us, just thought about or, or actually saying, I saw a tiger, and can you maybe do one with me? <laughs> can I sing that? Did you yeah, sing that? yeah. I saw I'm a tiger. Worst singer. I'm not going to do that for you, but I'll do a lot of things for you, but I won't do that. <laughs> All right, I don't uh -huh. think people want to hear me sing either, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm not going to sing that, but um, what was I going to say? No, I think I can sing scratch, Cat Scratch Fever better. All right, we're going to have to probably do that another time, Eric. Leave it at that. Eric Good, producer and director of Tiger King. So great to see you, and congratulations on an awesome show. Okay, thank you very much.